greetings from Punta Arenas. In today's video, we're going to be taking you around the capital city of Chile's southernmost region, Magallanes and Antártica Chilena. That's all the way down here. In this episode, we'll be hopping aboard replicas of historic ships like the HMS Beagle and the Nao Victoria, and imagining what it would have been like to cross uncharted waters like the early explorers. We'll also be showing you around some of Punta Arena's main attractions, including its plaza, this cool panoramic viewpoint, and its famed necropolis. And because you already know we're major foodies, we'll also be taking you to a few restaurants in search of steak and seafood. So let's get this video rolling. Good morning, good afternoon. Good morning from Punta Arenas. It is lunchtime. It's lunchtime. We've got food on our mind. In yes. fact, I think we know where we're going. I think we're going to go to a steakhouse. So yesterday while we were walking downtown, we noticed a very famous restaurant that specializes in parrilla and barbecue. Yeah. It's called Los Ganaderos. So that's where we're headed. So that's the plan for the food portion of this video. Yeah. And then we're going to head out and do some sightseeing. I really want to walk along the waterfront, check mm -hmm. out the pier, and we'll see what else we find along the yeah, way. Yeah, we've been doing some research about this city and there's quite a bit to do here. Mm -hmm. Let's check it out. Guys, the food is here. We were thinking the restaurant isn't very full today. What's going on? And it turns out we're just here early. Like, what time is it now? One o'clock? People start uh, running at one? Yeah. Past one. Past one. So, yeah. there's been a lot more people coming in. So, I ordered my steak. It's called a lo pobre. So, I basically got a piece of steak with two fried eggs on top. Mm -hmm. And it also came with french fries. The steak is very good, very tender. And we noticed on the menu, there were lots of different cuts to choose from. We also had Patagonian lamb, but I feel like you kind of need a very big appetite for that. All right, so I got the beef de chorizo, and I got some potato mash that comes with onions mixed in. I'm smelling some parsley in there too. <laughs> this looks delicious, guys. Can't they call it, it Leonesa style. Yeah. This is one of our favorite cuts that we have when we're in Argentina, so I can't wait to try it here in Chile. And I got it done al punto, which is which is a bit juicy. Can't wait to try. Mmm. Oh yeah, that's delicious, guys. Juicy, so much flavor. I mean, the way it's cooked like this, you don't really need to add anything. You don't really need chimichurri, even salt. It just tastes great on its own. We have some wine here, Cabernet Sauvignon. Chili does a good asado. The verdict is in. Dessert was all Sam's doing. This is artwork on a plate. This is a Snickers torta, Snickers pie. My goodness, does it ever look decadent. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to try this. It is thick. And the presentation couldn't be any more beautiful. Mm. It really does taste like a Snickers bar. That's what I have to say. And I don't want to know how many calories are in it. <laughs> well guys, that was a very good lunch as usual. We are rolling out of here feeling stuffed. Yeah. And we still need to go sightseeing. So we're going to start with a walk to kind of wake ourselves up <laughs> from the food coma. We ate like boas. Yeah. Um, the price, it was 55 US dollars total. So yeah, it's kind of pricey. We can't seem to get it much lower than that. It's usually 50 to 75 dollars whenever the two of us go out for food here in Chile. So that was two mains, one glass of wine, a soda water and dessert, um, but very good. That being said, Sam and I were discussing like what have been our most memorable meat and seafood experiences and we both agree that Chile and Peru are really good at seafood, like they're just outstanding in that department. And then Argentina and Uruguay really know yeah. their steak and they cannot be outdone. So no. our food was good, but we kept comparing it to Argentina <laughs> steak yeah. and Uruguayan steak a little bit. So yeah, it was tasty, but I definitely feel like the seafood in Chile really shines. And who knows, maybe they're Patagonian lamb. I saw a few people ordering that. Yeah. So maybe we should have gone with that. But a good meal overall. And now we go sightseeing.
And guys, another thing that has surprised us here in Chile that I keep forgetting to mention is that drivers stop for pedestrians. Like, we noticed this when we first got to Puerto Natales and now here too in Punta Arenas. And anytime there's like a zebra crossing or an intersection, it's like they give you priority. They're not trying to run you over, which is so strange having spent a few months in Argentina where you really have to be on guard, on high alert, looking who's coming and where are they coming from because people just turn and, you know, drivers do as they please. So that's been really nice as a pedestrian, kind of like feeling a bit safer here. We then hopped in a taxi and traveled to the now Victoria Museum, which is located about 15 minutes north of town. This is an open air museum that sits on the shores of the Strait of Magellan, and it's where you can see full-sized replicas of historic vessels. The idea for this museum came to be when a local businessman decided to build a replica of the now Victoria to celebrate Chile's bicentennial. Well, it proved to be no easy task. The search for the ship's original plans took almost three years, and it was then another two years to complete the whole construction. But today, this museum is considered one of the main draws to Punta Arenas. We first visited the now Victoria, which first set sail in 1519 as part of the Spanish five-ship expedition led by Ferdinand Magellan. The now Victoria was the only ship to complete the voyage and in the process became the first ship to successfully circumnavigate the globe. It's crazy to think that 500 years ago, people would have crossed entire oceans aboard a vessel just like this one. I would have been a miserable sailor. <laughs> In case you're curious about the captain's quarters, voila, here it is, the bed. In old glory, oh in simplicity, my. I should say. I mean, at least, I don't know, there is no at least, <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything positive to say. Oh my gosh, that must have been rough. Yeah. But you've got to think everyone else was probably like sleeping in hammocks yeah. below decks. This, so is, this was luxury. This was luxury. Right here. In case you're interested <laughs> in wow. seeing the toilet, Sam's a little bit tall for this. The drop, the loo, the hole. Are you asleep, Pepper? Is it? We also visited the replica of the HMS Beagle, one of the most famous vessels in history. During its first voyage, the HMS Beagle carried out a hydrographic survey of Patagonia and Tierra del Fuego, first under the command of Pringle Stokes and later Robert Fitzroy. It was during this voyage that the Beagle Channel was identified and named after this ship. Later, during the Beagle's second voyage, a young Charles Darwin would travel aboard, and we all know how he revolutionized science with his discoveries. It's not every day that we get to walk around the replica of the HMS Beagle, and this is a one-to-one -one scale, so exactly the size it would have been, and this is what it would have looked like on the inside. Perhaps a few more furnishings. I mean, right now we've basically got the bones. But yeah, nothing fancy, let me tell you. It's hard to imagine how people spend months at sea in one of these. We're back! We are back! Are we centered? Are we in the frame? I hope so. Get in here! Get closer! Let's get closer. There we so, go, we're in the frame. What a great day, huh? It was fun! It was a lot yeah. of fun! I especially love the museum, yes. now Victoria, with the ship replicas. Oh my gosh, the one-to-one -one replicas were amazing. Yeah. They had great information displays. Mm -hmm. 
It was a nice big site. It was fantastic like to be able to go and see what the ships were like, especially going into the bottom part. Yeah, like you can climb down, you can explore, you can see what the captain's yeah. quarters look like, the toilet. Seeing like the outhouse toilet. The outhouse, just, so... just a drop, really. Now, I will give you one little heads up for getting to this museum. Mm -hmm. It's outside of the city, maybe like a 10, 15 minute drive, not that far. Getting a taxi going there is very easy. But then coming back is a little bit of a dilemma because yeah. when we were done and I asked the guy working, like, you know, the, the, the box office, the admission booth, I'm like, would you be able to call a taxi or like, you know, how do we get back? Yeah. He's like, actually, no, I don't have any phone numbers for taxis. I can't do much. He's like, there is a bus that comes every 30 minutes on the other side of the highway. And I'm like, how's that gonna help me? Yeah, because the first road you go when, oh when you gosh. when you leave the premises is not actually the highway. No. We just got extremely lucky that we flagged down a cab driver yeah. who was going by. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like it was our lucky day. Uh huh. And it ended up driving us to the viewpoint. Yeah, so our, our next stop of the day was Cerro de la Cruz, yeah. which is a lookout point here in Punta Arenas, and you get really nice views of the whole cities, yeah. the rooftops, like the water, the, the ships. The vantage point is incredible, and, yeah. and you really, really see the city well from yeah. there. The other thing I should mention too is that we, we briefly visited the, the local market as well. Oh yeah, so while we were walking along the waterfront, we also popped into the municipal market mm -hmm. where they actually have a whole bunch of little restaurants where you can yes. go and eat seafood. Yeah. And there's also an artisanal craft section, so mm -hmm. kind of a cool place to check out. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We've got another one coming tomorrow, mm -hmm. right from here. And uh, we'll see you then. Uh, morning. Morning. Guys, today is our final day in Chile. Mm -hmm. These nine days have just flown by, haven't they? Sure have. It doesn't feel like nine days, my goodness. I know, but it's our final day here in Punta Arenas. Beautiful outside. I mean, last night we thought the roof was going to blow off. It was so windy. Seriously, like I cannot get used to these Patagonian winds. Yeah. It was howling like crazy out there. Yeah, we've noticed since we've been in Patagonia, I mean, there's days where it's not windy. There's days where it's windy. And I'd say like once a week, we get there's just crazy winds for like a certain yeah. amount of hours where yeah. it just feels like like Armageddon like 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 the yeah. house is gonna like yeah. collapse you know seriously so the plan for today we want to do a bit of sightseeing around the downtown area we've got the plaza the cathedral the necropolis some yeah. museums of course food Chilean food as usual we're yeah. gonna go in search of some tasty dishes what are you craving for food <sighs> I'm already uh, thinking about this. Well, what are you what are you craving something with seafood seafood I really yeah enjoyed I, I could it. totally have chilean seafood again but i'm, I'm open to trying anything i made your last day yeah. i'm probably gonna try a dish that we haven't had yet mm -hmm. that's probably that's my goal i'm kind of craving like a fish and seafood soup oh yeah it, with I, like a fish head floating you, around. you know what it's <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's still pretty chilly here guys even yeah. though this is this is about as warm as it gets uh, in this part of uh, Patagonia but I mean in the mornings it's cold so yeah I, I can understand that craving yeah anyways um let's bundle up and go outside let's go Our first stop of the day was the Cathedral of Punta Arenas, and from there we crossed over to Plaza de Armas, also known as Plaza Muñoz Gamero, which is the town square. Here you'll find a sculpture of the famed Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan. He achieved the first European navigation from the Atlantic to Asia, and the Strait of Magellan is named after him. That's the natural passage between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Then it was time for lunch and we chose a restaurant specializing in seafood. Eventful morning. So we were able to visit the cathedral. Yes. We had a little walk around the plaza and they also had little artisanal shops set up. So we did a bit of souvenir shopping for one of our friend's kids. We got little baby penguins, which are very cute. And then from there, we had a whole bunch of museums we wanted to go to. 
the first failure, the Naval and Maritime Museum. And we went based off of the information on Google Maps, like the schedule listed there. And yeah. then we get there and it turns out it's not actually open today. No, so, not on a Sunday. Not on a Sunday. We were not able to do that one. Failure then, number one. Failure number one. The other one, Palacio Sara Brown. That one is not only not open today, but when we got there, like the gates were chained up. So I don't know what the deal is. Then we went to the one called Regional Museum of Magellan. And we get to the main entrance and there was like construction happening. So it said uh, you have to go like around the block. The entrance is on the other street. Yeah. So we go around and we get there. And then there's another sign saying, oh, sorry. Actually, we're closed for the foreseeable future because we're doing renovation. <laughs> so yeah, we, so, we, we, didn't, we didn't just take one strike. We, we struck out. Three at, at the strikes. Three strikes and yeah. you're out. And then after all that, we looked at our watches and it was 12 o'clock. We were feeling hungry. So we're like, you know what? Let's just go for food now. Uh, we came to a restaurant called La Luna, yeah. which is very cool, like very funky, lots of characters. It's, I would describe it as oozing character. Yeah, like it's, just check yeah. out the walls. There's like little notes from yes. people who have eaten here and they've currency. also taken old currency, like these old two peso bills from Argentina yeah. no longer exist. And they've written messages and they're just like plastered yeah. all over the walls, photographs. It's got a bodegon vibe for sure. Yeah. And we are going for another seafood extravaganza. We're going all out for seafood on the last day because yes. Chile does amazing seafood. Yes, we actually ordered a giant platter yeah. that comes with everything like shrimp, scallops. I think there's going to be some calamari, like everything. There's like five or six yeah, we'll, different things. Yeah, we'll show you it all. Don't worry. We'll show it all. We'll show it all. And I got soup, my seafood soup. Yes. Well, you got yourself a fancy little cocktail there. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to be trying a Calafate Sour. Yeah. And we've seen this on the menu once or twice, and I don't know what's taking me so long to try it. Mm -hmm. We love this berry, the local berry, the Calafate berry. It's got uh, a strong blueberry, tastes a lot like a blueberry, and a little bit like a blackberry. Mm -hmm. And then the other very interesting thing is that, obviously, it comes with Pisco, which is a great brandy. So this is kind of a, a, a local twist on a, on a Pisco Sour. And you know Just. what they say, if you have Calafate berries, you will return to Patagonia. So drink up. Absolutely. And yes, <laughs> we will return to Patagonia, no doubt. Favorite place in the world. Ooh, ooh, ooh that's, really, that's really good. I'm going to really enjoy this drink. It's, it pairs well with, uh, with seafood. Cheers to you. beauty I got my soup on the side I was really craving a seafood soup over here we've got shrimp in a spicy hot chili sauce let's see what that's all about mm. this is Ooh, that is spicy it's got a little kick to it mm, a delicious kick now the broth aye aye captain mm. That is delightful. That'll clear your sinuses. I love spice though. I'm all about this dish. This one, this looks a lot like what I ordered the other day at the seafood restaurant. Remember the, the king crab? Yeah, I think that's what it is. In actually. a cream sauce. Oh, more, no, 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 no. More king crab. Oh, is this is scallops? scallops. Oh, it's a scallop. Wow. These are the parmesan. The other one is the king crab. Oh, yeah, right here. Okay. These are the parmesan scallops, which we also tried a few days ago. They were some of my favorite. Things that, Scallops. Thing of beauty over here, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so good and buttery and cheesy and the scallop just like melts in your mouth. It is so soft. I'm basically drinking like cream, cheese and butter here. If you like dairy, you've got Cali the trifecta Cal going Cal on Calories here. galore. I wish we had discovered this restaurant on day one because <laughs> I might have good? come back here every single day. Oh my gosh. La Luna, you need to come and eat at La Luna. Yeah. Come, oh for, come for the ambi the character and the great food. Oh, right? see. Yum, yum. Yes. Yes. Exactamente. I'm keeping the good times rolling. We've got a cup of wine here, Cabernet Sauvignon. 
Chile is one of the heavyweights in terms of wine in South America. In fact, Chile, you know, Argentina and Chile are the, are the top producers. And uh, this is my last chance to have a Chilean wine, so I am indulging. Enjoy. Salud. Salud. To health and good travel. It's fantastic, man. It's uh, the full body. Cab Sav, you gotta like it. Okay, so I've got three things to try here. The classic ceviche, calamari, it looks like a buttery sauce. And then of course, the king crab and like a cheesy creamy sauce. So, I am pumped. Let's dig in. I believe it's a salmon ceviche. Mm. Now that we're, we're leaving Chile tomorrow, ceviche is the thing I'm gonna miss the most. Yeah. Ceviche and the sushi that we've tried mm. and the seafood. Last but not least, king crab. King crab, king it's, crab casserole. Yeah, and they really there's a really a lot of the king crab. It's not just cheese and cream. It's mostly king crab. At least it appears to be that way. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my. That is the that is the king of the all the dishes. The king I've tried. of the dishes. The king crab's the king. Whoa. That is next level tender. Super buttery, super cheesy. Super, super tasty. I mean, overall, this is amazing. I've only tried the half portion. We're gonna just be digging in and sharing this whole thing. We are now visiting the cemetery of Punta Arenas, which is actually one of the main tourist attractions in the city. You could compare it to the cemetery of Recoleta, which is very well known in Buenos Aires and lots of people visit. Yeah. But personally, it kind of reminds me a bit more of the Chacarita Cemetery that yeah. we also visited in Buenos Aires. I'll say it's more green and spacious. It's almost like yes. cemetery meets park. To be perfectly yeah. honest. Yeah. Beautiful gardens. Yeah. I mean like look at that. Just look at this. You feel like I, you're I feel like amazed. we're walking towards a palace. And this is no no disrespect yeah. to anyone who's passed away and yeah. has been buried here, but it's just it's a very beautiful site as well. It I'm really wondering. is. Yeah. I can see why tourists visit. Yeah. Because it's always kind of strange when people want to go to cemeteries, but like some of them are just outstanding. Quite special. They're very beautiful here. Several hours We're all, later. Several hours later. <laughs> it's a great afternoon. We we actually did a lot in just a few hours. Mm -hmm. I'm quite surprised how much we were able to do. And that cemetery is very impressive, I have to say. Yes. That was the final thing we did before yeah. we took a cab ride back here. And I feel like I need to rave about the food a little yes. bit more because in case you couldn't tell, lunch oh was gosh. amazing. Totally like, amazing. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, if we had one more date. I'd probably go back and just get the exact same, same thing. Same thing. Literally. Yeah. Because you're basically yeah. getting to try five of their like signature dishes at this restaurant, but mm -hmm. kind of like little sampler sizes. Yeah. And it was so good. And the the best part of all was this the most affordable meal we had in the city. Yes. So fifty so US dollars total. 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 Yeah. So like that tray. Yeah. Plus we had dessert. Plus yeah. we had a cocktail. We had, two, we had two drinks. I had a cocktail and wine, and the bread basket, and the all water. that food, and the dessert. Great value. Yeah. I mean, for for Chile, it is more expensive here, but yes. uh, man, that was good. They just do seafood so well in Chile. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's a whole new level. And unfortunately, this is this is it for us here in Chile. That's the end. The time went so quickly. We loved seeing the Patagonian side of Chile. Mm -hmm. Um, in the past, we've also traveled to other places. We've been to Santiago, Valparaiso, and San Pedro de Atacama. Atacama, I should say. Atacama, Arica. Arica as well. Easter Island! Yeah, so mm. tomorrow we are going to spend the whole day traveling down to Ushuaia. Yeah. Apparently, it's an 11 and a half hour bus ride, yeah. including immigration Ferry, that we have to do, the border crossing. Ferry, border crossing, and yeah, just a lot of driving. Long day! And so it's going to be a very long day, but it is the destination we wanted to end off with, and so we are so excited. And so we hope you'll stay tuned because we're actually going to be in Ushuaia longer than any other destination on this trip. Yes. We've got 12 nights there, and so we're, we're going to be filming like crazy. 
and we just can't wait to get there. So hopefully we'll see you there. And thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.